Welcome to the Gamers Inn. Come on in, pull up a chair next to the fire. It looks like you've had a long journey. I'm your host, Jocelyn, and joining me as always is my co-host, Ryan. Hello, Ryan. Hey, Jocelyn. How's it going? Looks like the crossed fingers worked. <laughs> we have audio. <laughs> we have video. We have Swick. Yay. Swick, how are you? Eh, what? Uh, Jocelyn, I am rolling. Excellent. I, I don't actually know what that means. Why are you rolling? Are we rolling out? We just started. Actually, Come on, guys. I just messed. Uh, see, I just messed up because I used a European slang term in a Canadian group. Oh, see. yeah. No, well, we, you we know what? got British slang. You know, we're, right. we're okay with Brit slang, but not European. No, none of that. Oh, <laughs> sorry. British in the European. Well, I guess kind of technically, but. <laughs> are they their own thing? Well, then wait. Is rolling like a european just not british thing like is it french i don't know denmarkian out of denmarkian you know what let's just say it's from the movie tombstone and move on oh all right fair enough never seen it <laughs> i don't know what you're talking oh. about we don't we don't get good action <laughs> movies up here oh Bad my gosh movies. well that's kind of like the epitome of an american western but oh, <laughs> dude but no it's like too. The reason why Val Kilmer is awesome. All right, never mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong podcast. We are the Gamers Sorry. Inn. We are on episode 99. We are talking the video games. And the one big thing that happened this week was the drop of the PS4. So, of the three of us, there is one of us who actually has yeah. one in his hands. Mr. Ryan Murphy, who took the day off work today to play with the PlayStation 4. <gasps> was it oh, worth it? Yeah. Yes, it was, of course. Um... I, Don't say, of course, I, the Wii U was a piece of crap and a waste of a day, so. <laughs> I don't know. She's kind of right. It's, <laughs> really, it's all a matter of perspective. I mean, <laughs> you you could, uh, like, yeah, anybody could sit down and be like, I took the day off to enjoy this sweet apple um, I bought from the grocery <laughs> store. It's like, well, that's great. I mean, what, you just parsed it out through the course of the day? As long as you had fun, it doesn't really matter. But... Yeah, the Wii U, uh, compared to what the PS4 has offered, uh, yeah, it's not the same. Um, but yeah, I went to EB last night at like 11.30 to pick up my PS4, and I hate launch lineups. <laughs> I despise them. Like, I was so nervous. Like, I, I live like two minutes down from Why? EB, so I... Hold up. Why you despise launch lineups? I He's talking about you lineups got... on launch day, not launch lineups of games. Okay. Uh, well, the launch lineup is not that great either. <laughs> I mean, people scoffed at the Wii U like, oh, a Mario game and Zombie U. But I would put those games above what were what is available on the PS4. Um, I mean, Killzone and Knack. Oh, just a, Watch Dogs you know, isn't a launch title anymore, right? If Watch Dogs was not. a launch title, I think... Yeah, I think that would have made this a, a, and that actually, you know, ties in with Paul. I mean, you canceled your pre-order because you won Watch Dogs, right? We okay. Should we get into this? I think we should get into this. Yeah, okay. might, well, I threw it to you. It, it is not. It, it no, that is incorrect. I did not oh. cancel my PS4 pre-order because of Watch Dogs. <laughs> I Watch Dogs just kind of was the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back in terms of like it kind of deflated me. You know, like, OK, I was I, I promise you, I, 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 I vow to you both, Ryan and Jocelyn, uh -huh. that I am going to get a PS4 and I'm going to get an Xbox One. This is going to happen. <laughs> I just know I looked at all the games mm -hmm. and I'm just like, I don't need any of them. Mm. That's that's all there was to it. I just didn't. I looked at it. And I'm like, I, you know. I can do without another kill zone. I can do without knack. I could do without, and I'm not saying they're crappy games. I'm, I'm oh, just not. They you just, just seem, don't need just them right of, now. No, and they're kind of, you know, they might look prettier, which is great. They're just kind of like, I, I need something better. Hmm. I'm kind of spoiled. Is that wrong? No, not no. at all. So what are I, what are you spoiled by? Is it your PC that's spoiling you? The PC is helping for sure. I think a lot of. Uh, I think the indie scene is amazing right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I I don't know. Maybe I'm too picky. <laughs> maybe that's it. But I, no, uh, no well, I, I was also looking, I was also, and not to change the subject too much, but I was also looking at, I was looking at the 3DS numbers, like in mm. terms of, okay, if I got a 3DS today, which games would I want to play? And 
with the new Zelda coming up and that really, really fancy 3DS that comes with it. Which I, I pre-ordered awful. and should be on my doorstep next Friday. No, I have that pre-ordered too. <laughs> and it's ah, it's don't so cancel just, it. I, I'm tempted. What? I don't know why. I know. It's What's like wrong? you hate fun. <laughs> I don't hate fun. It's like yeah. I don't. I I don't I hate fun. You. It's that I want it. I want it to be worth the time. I want it to be worth the investment. That's all. That's all I'm saying. And right now, it's not worth it for me. Yeah. And I, I'm think I think I need to like express this in like an article on Final Score or something because. Mm-hmm. It's like I feel like this might be the case of a few different people. Yeah. You know, too. Well, I mean, Maybe. I feel like because um, I didn't pre-order anything, I have no intentions of getting a next-gen console right now. I feel like eventually I will pick one or the other. It will probably be the PlayStation. What I'm actually looking more forward to is uh, a chance to finally get my hands on a PS3 because there's going to be some really awesome bundles coming out around the holidays this year. I mean, we saw some of them that were... Um, leaked in the um, GameStop Black Friday flyer that came out. Um, So, I mean, I think I'm going to finally get a chance to get a PS3. There's some titles on the PS3 that I know I really like, that I really want to play. Little Big Planet is one. Um, Uncharted series is another. Um, I am an absolute sucker for Fat Princess. It's got to be one of my favorite, like little fun um almost like throwaway games ever it's just it's got this great sense of humor and i can sink hours into it but without owning a ps3 then you know it's just i i can't get my hands on it anymore so i think you know for a couple hundred bucks which is what these bundles are priced at you know for 200 bucks they get a 500 gig playstation with a copy of uncharted 2 or whatever you know like those are really really good deals and there's nothing wrong with the playstation 3 that's pretty sweet so um, I, I convinced someone at I work to. Sorry, Paul. Uh, I, I was just saying, like with the PS3, I, I had convinced somebody at work to buy a PS3. It's way too hard to convince someone to buy a PS4. Mm-hmm. It's it's really about. It's not about the games. Uh, the games are nice, and like Paul said, the best thing going for them. And this is why I think the Wii U sort of faltered in the eyes of many gamers because it didn't have that newness. It mm-hmm. didn't have the one thing that's going for every new console and it's that it's pretty and it's something that you can't get on other systems. Like right. if you look at Killzone or even Knack and then compare that to current PC games out there, there aren't a lot that look that nice. Mm-hmm. Um, there are some, don't get me wrong, and there are some that that look really nice, and and but they're just, you know, they're either too advanced that you'd have to like, like what's a game, uh, like a really good looking PC game that sort of is like miles above other ones, like Battlefield. And I mean that's on on the next gen systems as well. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think but that's I think. the one thing going for the PS4 and the Xbox One for that matter is that you know when you boot it up, the games you throw in it are at least going to look nice, and there's that. Um, that newness that just kind of like makes you want to you want to go out and get it but really there's no reason to buy any of these systems at launch whatsoever right. Right. there's no reason i mean maybe with the wii you kind of had that like twilight princess on the wii i suppose that's probably a good reason but even with the wii u like a new mario game it was new super mario brothers there was no reason to go out and pick that up because if you did own a 3DS, you sure as hell bought New Super Mario Brothers 2. Mm-hmm. So you'd already played that game like three months yeah. ago. You know, so... And Paul, like, you probably watched the uh, PS4 All Access that happened uh, last night and realized that they announced a uh, uh, infamous Second Son PS4 bundle. So right uh-huh. there, it's yeah. basically them saying, like, you know, this is the game everybody's waiting for. It's probably going to be the first game, similar to the, with the Wii U. Like it was, it was Pikmin three. Um, it didn't release two months after launch, like Infamous is going to. But you know, Sony's smart. They're saying this is the game people want this system for. They have to wait a couple months. But the people who didn't buy a PS4 are obviously going to go, out, and, and who want one for that matter, are going to mm-hmm. go out and buy this bundle. I'm not saying everybody that didn't buy one is now like suddenly convinced. You know? No, but there are some people that were planning on waiting anyway, and those people mm-hmm. who are planning on waiting anyway and who were going to pick up the PlayStation when Infamous came out, then, you know, mm-hmm. that's uh, putting a bundle would change minds and be like, oh, if I can get, because I found um, there were quite a few of 
PlayStation 3 bundles that have come out over the years that I've been like, oh man, if only I could get my hands on that. And they're all sold out. Like they, when PlayStation does a bundle, they are not available for long. You know, they go really fast. They are, they pick really good games to put in their bundles, which is one thing that always I found versus the Xbox, you know, the Xbox bundles were shit. Like PlayStation bundles yeah. always made me look at it and they either had a controller or, you know, a um, game, like something about it that really made me go, oh man, I wish I had the $350 on me right now and I just don't have it to spare. Whereas I never felt that way with Xbox. When I picked up my Xbox, I was just like, well, I've got a little bit of spare cash right now. I don't have enough for a PlayStation. I want to play with my friends who right now are all playing on Xbox. So I'm going to spend, you know, I got, I think, the arcade version or whatever. I had to buy a separate hard drive later on. So, you know, like all I wanted was just to get on the system where my friends are playing and play Fable, which was Xbox exclusive. So, yeah, I think the diff. <clears throat> excuse me, I think the difference... <laughs> I can explain why that just happened. <laughs> I think the different... I, I'm hitting puberty just in case somebody was wondering. Spoiler alert. Um, but uh, <laughs> I think the um, the difference with Microsoft and Sony when it comes to these bundles is that Sony was all about, you know, give us a little extra cash and we'll throw in this new great game with the system. I mean, they, they partner games with systems as, as if they are system sellers. Mm -hmm. Like Uncharted, system seller. Infamous, it's going to be a system, system seller. Microsoft is a little different. They go after the collectors and say, hey, we know you're a Star Wars nut. Let's make an R2-D2 Xbox. Mm -hmm. And when you hit the power button, it goes, woo, woo, you know, like, yeah. like it's excited to see you or something. Yeah, but I think that's the big difference there. So with uh, Microsoft, they did have a couple bundles where you could get like, Halo Reach and uh, a couple others, but I think those were always like download codes uh, as mm -hmm. well. Um, which I'm, that's the other thing too, is that as you'll notice with these next gen systems and even with the 3DS, um, it's all going digital like downloads and stuff, you know? Like you I guys was a little bit disappointed with my pre order of the 3DS because it is a download code for Zelda. And I mean, yeah, I, I put my like discs and stuff they're in a drawer i don't look at them i don't display them anywhere like i never use the boxes again but just having the box makes me feel so happy there's something to be said about opening the box and they don't even have manuals in them anymore but it's just yeah. that having it you know like i i don't want to download code <laughs> well you're gonna find oh, that um, with most all the all games you buy from here on out like the kill zone box that i have in the other room is literally um, a sheet for like seven days of PlayStation Plus, and then the manual like is just the controller layout, and that is the uh, inside of the cover for the game. Mm -hmm. So you don't even get like a little leaflet; it's like part of the um, uh, the page that is the cover art. Yeah, basically, yeah. it's the reversal. So um, with the 3DS, I've gone towards you know downloading the games, buying them on the eShop. Mm -hmm. I mean. Really, I, I'm right there with you, Jocelyn. I love having the case, but a month later, it's just clutter, and I put it in, like, a drawer. Like, I have a drawer with, like, 12 3DS cases. Yeah. You know, and it's, like, with the download, they're, they're smaller downloads, so you can have, like, one giant SD card and have them all on there. Mm -hmm. um, but you'll find with the next-gen systems, with a 500-gig hard drive, that thing's going to fill up really quick. Really fast, yeah. So... I'm probably more inclined to buy, and I'm experiencing this with the Wii U, like 32 gigabytes is what it launched with. And uh, I have That's because it's buy. not next gen. It's them catching up to current gen. <laughs> okay, well, we're not going to have that conversation right now. Um, <laughs> the, 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 I'd have to go out. I have She's kind of right. Now. I'm just saying, man, you don't have a lot of argument to say that it's not, right? Well, what's the definition of next gen? It's the next generation of the console. All right. The Wii U is You're right. Is we. No, it's not, not it's not of the console it's of the console space so mm. you have your next gen console space where everything is 1080 it's fast it's got eight gigs of ram and 500 mm. gigs of space and all the rest of it and everything that the wii u is doing is lining up with everything that the last gen generation of consoles did so i yeah nah, we're not gonna have this conversation again but yeah it's like semantics i guess you're you're right i'm right <laughs> but i think you're probably a little more writer when you think about it in the, in the general <laughs> more writer 
Yeah, just a little more writer. <laughs> wow. Um, but anyways, but, to, did I just walk in? Yeah, back, back to... Like, <laughs> to bring this back about... to the PS4. <laughs> yeah, the PS4. Okay, so I went to the midnight launch. There was like 30 of us there. It was so... Console launches have changed so much in the sense like... You remember it was exciting. There's lots of people, and everyone's sort of like antsy in line. Like I was there, and it was super quiet. People were just there to grab their system. Uh, the the employees, um, God bless their souls, they were doing really well. They were doing a great job of just getting everybody in there out of the cold. We waited in the store for like ten minutes, and they're like, "Come on, everybody, get excited! Four more minutes! Four more minutes!" And I'm just like, "Everyone's just, just so give quiet. me my freaking box." Um, <laughs> So I, I got to have them. Yeah. You have them, sir. <laughs> well, they kept bringing them out so you could see them, right? And um, people were just genuinely excited to grab their systems. And I got home around one. And um, obviously, everybody was trying to boot it up. So um, PSN kept going down. I yeah. ended up getting like three hours of sleep last night. Uh, I went to bed at four after I didn't play any games, I just like had it running. And, that seems to yeah. happen to you every time, whether it's, you know, downloading Diablo <laughs> or, you know, whatever it is that you're installing, or if it's, you know, an actual console launch. The same thing happened to you with the Wii U. It's just like, oh, downloading updates, oh, patching, oh, you know, like four hours later, I guess I should sleep. <laughs> well, yeah, I was kind of like, what's going on out there? It's like a monster at my door. Um, <laughs> I We're going to get it on camera. Yeah, great. Uh, most outlast gamers novel. in ever. <laughs> <laughs> Paranormal <Yeah>. Activity Five. <laughs> um, I I uh, yeah yeah I it, PSN wasn't working, so I guess it didn't help that I was also playing like the new XCOM game and uh, like kept switching the TV input back to the computer. <laughs> and uh, so by the time four o'clock rolled around, it's like you know what? I'm not even gonna bother booting up a game. Yeah. Because you know, I'm just gonna go to bed. And today I just I played it like all day. Um, I downloaded all of the... Um, the great thing about the PS4 is that it launches with a bunch of free-to-play titles. Mm. Um, nothing new. I mean, it's uh, it's Warframe, Blacklight, and DCOU. Those are the three games that I downloaded that were free-to-play. Um, those are all on PC. They were all on... Well, they're all on PC. No yeah. free Fat Princess? Ugh. Well, no, it's not on PS4. It's, <gasps> I know, uh, I'm that... teasing. There is a cross-play, though, like, if you buy a couple games that were on PS3, like um, Flower and Flow, if you own those on, on your PS3, then you automatically have PS4 versions. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of those examples. Um, but uh, I did pick up Killzone. Uh, the reviews for these launch titles, the first-party launch titles, aren't great, but really that's to be expected. And I was going to say, is anyone really surprised? No, and, and I at first I was kind of like, looking at what Xbox One is launching with, it'll be interesting to see what the reviews are like, because I feel like those games, except for Rise, are probably going to review pretty favorably. Yeah. You know, because oh, Dead Rising 2 is a third-party exclusive. Three. Dead Rising say, 3. That's your, your th yeah, right, right, three. Sorry. Three hours of sleep. Um, Dead Rising 3 <laughs> looks really good, I think, and I think it's probably going to get really well reviewed and forza i mean it's a racing game and people like forza so it'll be interesting to see what those reviews get but when you look at killzone and knack um it just suffers from launch itis you know it's like they're just get a game out there um they're very shallow killzone looks great um but it is another i was kind of like i don't know if i want another first person shooter i mean the launch titles for the PS4, like, it's 50% first-person shooters. And I'm mm. kind of done with first-person shooters. Yeah. I've played so many of them, and I'm feeling that with Killzone. It's just, it's kind of like... I don't think it's first-person shooters. I think it's what they do with them. Mm. It's not about the, it's not about the, you know, the perspective. No, uh, no. You know, some people are not into that, or some people are into that or not. It's about what you do with that. Like, yeah. you know, you're what you're talking about is you're, it sounds like you're suffering from like what I think a lot of people are suffering from and that they just are getting kind of sick of the war. Yes. Yeah. First person. Right. So it was fair of me to throw Borderlands two under the bus, which we are going to be playing <laughs> after this. And I love Borderlands two and it's a two year old game and I will totally go back to it. And if they had a PS4 version, I'd probably look at it. It's like, Oh, that looks nice. Um, but I think, 
you know, uh, the great thing about Killzone is it just looks great. It, it it demos the PS4 very well, whereas the a lot of the other games that you get like um, like the free to play stuff, are just their PC versions, so they're not right. op- not like optimized. You know, well they're optimized, but they're not like this is the PS4 version and it looks amazing. You can tell like oh, this is probably what it would look like on on PC. Yeah. Um, now you are given P- PlayStation Plus at launch, and you get two free games. Um, those two free games, there was like Contrast, which is a also oh, yeah. on PC. It's. I think it's, I played a bit of that at E3. Not that great. It's it's all right, but it's not anything to write home about. But Resogun, the other free one, is fantastic. It's like mm-hmm. this like side scrolling, circular shoot 'em up. It's really hard to explain, but it, it just looks really great. And um, that being free with every PS4 is really awesome because it's kind of like a get in there and play. It's not something you're going to play for two months while you're waiting for Infamous, but it's still really, mm-hmm. really nice. So um, I know with uh, with the launch of the Wii U, I mean, not that you regretted it, but at the same time, you didn't have a whole lot to play on your Wii U for a long time. Huh. So, I mean, with the PlayStation 4, are you feeling like the same sort of thing? Like you got it on launch and you're excited for it and you're going to play it for two days and then you're going to go back to work on Monday and go, well, shit, I could have used that few yeah, hundred no. dollars on something else, you know? You're not you're not going to have that issue with the PS4. You may find you're going to be playing games that you could have played on the PC, you know, and the only reason you're playing them is so you have something to play on the, on the PS4. I mean, I did that with the Wii U where I'd go, I was like, well, I guess I'll play Ninja Gaiden 3 and hate it but it's still a game i can play on my wii u mm-hmm. you know i guess i'll buy assassin's creed on the wii u because i'm an idiot um <laughs> you know those those things that is the legitimate conversation i had with myself um but with the ps4 it's like there's just so many options there i don't think there's a lot coming out between now and infamous mm-hmm. but with all those like indie titles and free-to-play titles you know if you do get sick and tired of kill zone uh you can go oh, i'm gonna try dco you know uh, sorry DC, dc online um dc universe online right i don't know but anyway i i wouldn't play it on pc but because like you know it's a free download on the ps4 and i kind of want to play my ps4 and um it's a really neat option and it's it's still again back to that well i guess i should play stuff on my brand new console just so i can experience you know my my new system but yeah so you know it's, I mean? it's, it's but you're excuse. still in the, you're still in the mindset of I'm experiencing my new console as opposed to I am justifying my purchase, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Like I, I I mean I can justify my purchase because like I'm having a blast with I love new tech. I love just tinkering and getting in there and 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 enjoying my new systems. Like I don't regret. I never regretted the Wii U and I don't regret the PS4 yet. Um, <laughs> but you know. Yeah, I, and I doubt I will. That's just the type of person I am. I, I'm sure a lot of people out there is like, "Oh, you bought kills on that's it." It's like, mm-hmm. I'm thinking I'm gonna pick up Black Flag at yeah. some point because I rented it on the Xbox to give it a shot, and it is a very good Assassin's Creed game. Mm-hmm. And I kind of I'm gonna let it, you know, my experience sort of like, uh, you know, put some time between purchasing it and when I actually played like ten hours of it. Uh, I'll probably pick it up on Boxing Day, but. Yeah, I mean, there's no boxing <laughs> yes, day Boxing is. Day is a thing. <laughs> yeah, no, you know, it's the day after Christmas for all you yes. American yes. Uh, listeners. But uh, no, so, it's, Swick, it's a great system. Yeah. Um, are you? I know you've obviously you canceled your pre-order. And are you regretting that at all? Are you thinking you might um, try to get an Xbox One on day one, or are you just like, eh, next no. gen can wait? Uh. <sighs> I feel like a bit of a party pooper. No, I'm not going to I'm not going to get Xbox day one. Uh, the only exception that I might regret is Ryan's right. At, at least for me, I have always enjoyed the Dead Rising series mm. and I'm going to be sad that I aren't that I'm not going to be able to play that right away. Mm-hmm. But well, again, mean, it's like, it, you know, it's I, I don't know that I would pay five hundred dollars just for dead rising just right for, now. well that's kind of that's what i i always struggle with and i struggled with it through the entire console cycle with the ps3 is you know now they have a library of games that i would really like to play and i'd like to go spend a couple of hundred dollars to pick up the system to play them on but every mm-hmm. single time something new for the playstation comes out i'm always like oh man i really want to play that game but i don't yeah. want to pay four hundred dollars or three hundred dollars to play 
a game because realistically, which is something I'm running into, like I mentioned off the top of the show that I pre-ordered the 3DS, there are four or five solid titles that I want to play right away on the 3DS, but I just dropped like $250 on the console because um, it's the limited edition Zelda one. It comes preloaded with the new Zelda game. So it was $229 plus tax, which is like 15% in Nova Scotia. So, you know, it's $250 by the time all is said and done. Communists. (laughs) Communists. <laughs> yeah. So with it being $250, I don't have any money left over to buy any other title. So essentially, I've paid $250 to play the new Zelda, which is kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, if that's if I mean, yeah, whatever. That, I've done... always the way I love Ryan's things. points when he's just like, well, that's, you know, yeah. Uh, I'm just <laughs> saying, I'm tired. <laughs> it's been a long day. Well, whatever, uh, man. I, I, I think, I think when, if that's the way you're going to look at it, then that kind of gimps your experience. Like, it's like, well, you know, you said it about the PS3. Like, there's tons of games on the PS3. And I know there are going to be tons of games down the road for the PS4. Mm-hmm. So, like, me pick, and I said this about the Wii U, like, well, the Wii U is a little different in the sense that they had a price cut before a lot of great games came out. So probably waiting for a Wii U was a smart choice for those who haven't picked one up yet. But the but PlayStation the- 4, sure that's not going to drop. waited on the Wii U is more than secure in their waiting for the Wii U. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think with the PS4, like, in my mind, you're not going to see a price cut on it. And you know there's going to be a lot of great games coming out. Yeah. And if I save, I save my money for it, you know, it's not like I was like, so I just put it on the credit card. I'll worry about it later. I need my new system. It's totally um, what I did with the 3DS. <laughs> well, you know, it's like... Uh, future Jocelyn will have to worry about exactly. this one. Cha-ching! Yep. <laughs> and I said, future Ryan doesn't have to worry about the PS4 because I know there are going to be a lot of great titles coming out between now and when they do eventually have a price and that, cut. And that's fine. But what you're talking about, kind of, is that you're getting into the zeitgeist of the just having a new system. And that's really where the regret comes in is like is any there game wrong with that really it, as long as it pans out right well i suppose but you know gamers are you know i think a lot of gamers are like this they're like oh i want you know, i i you know there's not much to play but oh yeah well I don't, I'm not it's gonna cool have to, like, it's new we haven't like, had a new console in a long time mm-hmm. i i like i like it yeah i'm not gonna use it right away but i like it <laughs> That's true. No, that that is a, a and, valid criticism on on what I did. Like, I knew that come launch day, I I'm gonna want one of these, ma- mainly because they're new and and I want to experience next gen. Um, but you're right. Like, it's like you probably could have waited. But yeah. it, it, you, know, you know what? Fine. It's just one of those things, man. It's it, just everybody's different. But the killer. I want to well, before we move on. I want to say the killer feature of the PS4, and I don't know how the Xbox One is going to work, but I played around with this, is the Twitch streaming mm. on the PS4. Sure. It, you know, we had some XSplit issues before this. You know, uh, <laughs> happens, happens often. XSplit happens is all the time. Of, yeah, XSplit is kind of a piece of software. And, and that's because it's doing something very complex. And the PS4 streaming I is... I don't think... The, yeah, I what? think you're giving it a little too much credit. You, I, you, I, don't know that, I don't know that it's very complex. Not now. Okay. But anyway, whatever. Go ahead. I was just... <laughs> Like the PS4 streaming is you hit a button, you log into Twitch, there is overlay options so you can literally just broadcast your 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 screen or you can broadcast um, your screen, uh, a little webcam, you know, it has an on-air light and, you know, it'll, it'll actually have chat scroll up for people so when they're watching full screen they can still see that chat. But the reason they do that is because it's not just a broadcast to Twitch. I can go into this um, app called the... Uh, PlayStation Live, and I can look at every person who's streaming their PS4, and say like you, you say I'm interested in say Knack, and I'm like I kind of you know I kind of want that new Knack game because it you know I want a new I had this issue today I was like kind of want another game for the system because it's new and I want to try something different that isn't a shooter so I went on and you can kind of you can look at all these games and you can watch people stream their game from the PlayStation 4. Um, and it works really well. Like I can insert, I can search for a specific title, you know, and it, you know, you watch it, it looks great. I don't know how the Xbox One is going to work. I mean, I didn't know this was a feature for the PS4, so I was really surprised when I saw it. But 
I don't know if the Xbox One has that same functionality. I know you can stream. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure mm -hmm. it has some kind of thing like that. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. That was one of the big things when the Xbox One was first announced is that they announced that they were going to have Twitch streaming and it was going to be all built in. It's easy peasy, whatever. And they were the only console to have it. And then a few weeks later, PlayStation struck a deal with Twitch and now they both have Twitch streaming, which is awesome because nobody wants to stream to any other service, really. I mean, if you're looking for viewers and you're looking to be in the gaming streaming space, then you have to be on Twitch. There is no other option. Well, I mean, yeah, but I'm, I'm curious to see if, if Xbox will present those streams for you to watch in the same fashion that the PS4 right. has done because we'll I think that is a killer feature. Uh, well, okay, I can speak in general terms here. Mm -hmm. What you're talking about, you're talking about like the ability for you to consume media, and I would say that my, uh, that <laughs> that's you know, all Microsoft, the Xbox does, <laughs> right? That's kind of like why TV, you're TV, extra TV, TV, bones. Call of Duty, TV. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and you yeah. know, whatever, cool. I that's another thing. I I don't feel comfortable yet with spending an extra hundred bones on that because yeah. that's what I feel like I'm paying for. I feel like I'm paying for that uh, for that extra features that I'll never use. Well, and that's another question too with the Xbox One. I mean, a lot of the features are tied to the fact that you have a cable service. If you don't have a cable yeah. service, then you don't need those features and you can't use those features. So in the case in our household, we do not have cable. We have a super fast internet connection, which is awesome, but mm -hmm. we don't have cable. So we would not and get the, the way, TV channels. That's going to be buggy as shit. Well, like yeah. I'm not, uh, it's, oh God, I it, try, try to work with cable <laughs> providers about anything. Yeah. Oh, no, there's the, that. <laughs> it's yeah. It'll be interesting. To, I'm, I'm more interested to see how the Xbox one launch goes because I think they're trying to do a whole lot more that can go a whole lot worse. Like the PS4, you know, everything has sort of just worked, um, but there's not a lot that can go wrong. I mean, they aren't doing anything too crazy right like mm -hmm. the newest feature oh. is sort of the streaming capturing well, thing no yeah i i wouldn't go that far i just all, all i'm saying is that mm. though with those they're uh, they're selling me features that i don't need mm -hmm. basically or what or care to need yeah you know One so whatever i right. i don't I, that's kind of it. I, <laughs> one quick question to you before we move on, Ryan, um, mm -hmm. just on this vein of streaming and consuming media. Um, at least my biggest issue with um, Xbox in this current gen has been that you have to pay for live to do anything, right? You need to pay uh, have a live subscription right. in order to watch Netflix. Do you have to have the PlayStation Plus subscription with the PlayStation 4? to do all of the Twitch streaming and to, you know, consume Netflix and, and play multiplayer, all that kind of stuff. Cause I know they were saying mm -hmm. that some games would require it and some games wouldn't. And, you know, they PlayStation, I found at least um, a few months ago, wasn't really that clear on exactly what would be locked down and what wouldn't. So have you found mm -hmm. that I'm, I know that PlayStation plus comes with the PlayStation four, but yeah, that's a good question. Um, I know I know there are certain apps that aren't affected by the PlayStation Plus. Now PlayStation Plus is you know it says you know uh, access the instant game collection, um, which is something Xbox One is trying to duplicate. But I think Microsoft's too cheap to match mm -hmm. Sony. Yeah. Um, and then it just says play online multiplayer. Uh, I don't know for a fact if if Twitch is um, is locked behind that paywall. I know Netflix isn't because that's mm -hmm. something they. They made sure to tout, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if it required PlayStation Plus because mm -hmm. it is sort of this, you know, feature that I think would kind of require that extra money. Um, right. But I also wouldn't be, I, you know, quick but Google Sony's, search. But like, Sony has been free for so long that, I mean, it would be, I have it would be a good it. time if you were going to bring in a paywall to do it with your new next-gen console. But at the same time, I mean, that's obviously not a popular move. But sorry, what were you going to say, Paul? Uh, I was just going to say that I have heard that you do not need a PlayStation Plus account in order to stream. Oh, nice. Well, there you go. So that's awesome because well, that means you can stream single player content at least. And yeah, yeah. that's I think, awesome. I think the main reason they put that the, the multiplayer paywall in there is just to avoid the whole mess that was, uh, uh, what was uh, shit online passes. I think right. that was the main reason that they did that. And I think that's really smart because 
there's nothing worse than say renting a game and then not being able to play the multiplayer mm-hmm. because you know renting or borrowing from a friend like it's super annoying yeah well i think that pretty much does it for our playstation 4 talk we will uh talk about it again next week ryan if you if you experience anything new i want to share it but uh just Mm -hmm. wanted to quickly say that ryan and i really appreciate your support of our show along with the support of our sponsor doghouse systems you can use the code the gamers in to double your ram when you purchase a new gaming rig head on over to doghousesystems.com and get your order on which would normally bring us to quickfire news but our special guest paul swickard was at blizzcon so screw quickfire we have Mm -hmm. blizzcon (laughs) We do indeed. BlizzCon was amazing. Was it? Oh, man. It was fun. I haven't even had a chance yet to consume the virtual ticket content. I am Uh so glad that that is available past the event because, like, I was (laughs) at HalCon. (laughs) Yeah, I was at HalCon last weekend, so I didn't actually get to watch it at the time. So that'll probably be what I do tomorrow is just a ton of virtual ticket. We did watch the opening ceremonies and um the hearthstone fireside chat or whatever they called it so you know we and we tried to watch the um the wow talk Mm -hmm. that was boring me to tears we couldn't get which one the um the the what's next or the the what's next next, i think yeah Yeah. the Uh, one where i think it was uh chris metzen was just i think like i think saying one thing and then (laughs) pausing oh christmas forever and i was just like oh i just say it dude <laughs> well that's the issue okay. with the the virtual ticket is that most of the in most of the interesting stuff can be summed up in you know uh, a news story on joystick but i think well, the reason that I, well yeah i think that i think the reason that you know the expansion can be boiled down to here's the bullet list here's what to get excited about yeah. but when you really want to drill down into it and they can talk about it for an hour. You see the concept art. They have videos mm-hmm. for every dungeon, and I think uh, I think that's really if you if you're gonna watch the virtual ticket, you gotta make sure you're kind of like a super fan. You really wanna know all of this stuff mm-hmm. and know that's... so much useless information. <laughs> um, in my mind, having not played WoW now, but for the hardcore WoW nerds, they'll want they'll want to know this stuff. They sure. wanted Merc a lot, which is it's my big thing. Is I really wanted the the Merc a lot pet. Um, and the and the Hearthstone card, you know, and which oh, yeah. which was one thing that I thought that Blizzard did really well is um, everyone was kind of worried that the legendary Hearthstone card that you got with the virtual ticket was going to be exclusive to virtual ticket holders and that it was going to essentially be game breaking, which they should know better than that by now. Blizzard doesn't I... do stuff like that. They don't break pet battles with the exclusive pets. They don't break... Mm-hmm. Starcraft with and if they did, they would have caught with banners. I didn't, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> there isn't oh, really no, your banners distracting. I just misclicked and my APMs went down. Damn it! <laughs> exactly. So um, you know, you had to know that they wouldn't break the game, and they did make it exclusive in a way, in that the gold version of the card is you can only get by being a either attendee or virtual ticket holder, but oh. you can craft the legendary the same way you can craft every legendary. So it is actually available in game to everyone. It's just you can't craft the gold version. So I didn't know that. Yeah. So I mean in the end I think they did really well and the reason that again that I bought the virtual ticket was mostly for the for the extras. But um, I did want to see a lot of the content too. The opening ceremonies was pretty good. I laughed yeah. so hard when he was like so who's in the Hearthstone beta? And most of the crowd cheered. And then like, who's not? And then some of the crowd cheered. And he's like, well, good news for you guys. Open yeah, right. beta in a month and a half. And everyone was just like, silence. Yeah. <laughs> and they were just like, Yay. it's like everyone was expecting either open beta on BlizzCon weekend or like all attendees get into like get beta access, get into the, sure. <laughs> into the beta. They should have just give, given hey, all you. the people there. They should have. Yeah. <laughs> They kind of shot themselves in the foot, like just in general when it comes to BlizzCon, because everyone always expects like these big, just earth shattering news. Yeah. (laughs) So whenever they, you know, drop one of those like, you know, sort of sort of middling things like, you know, it's like, oh, what? (laughs) That's cool. Sweet. My favorite favorite part about the opening ceremony was when they said uh, uh, Hearthstone's going to be coming to the iPhone uh, in the later half of 2014 and like it just seemed like everybody like there were a lot of android users that everyone's just like oh what about android which seems to be like the standard response and it almost like they knew 
everybody in the crowd was going to do that. So then it's like, oh, it's coming Android 2 later, you know, don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, they set that up pretty well, actually. <laughs> I thought that, that was, was really I was, well done. I actually, I swear to God, I had no idea what they were going to say. Like, I heard <laughs> grumbling in the crowd, and I'm like, what? What's the problem? It's, it's on iOS. What's the deal? And then they showed the Android logo, and everybody cheered up, like, oh, oh. right. Okay, oh, right. Sorry. You guys are yeah. uber geeks, and you're all Androids. <laughs> yeah. Don't get don't get the Android lovers started. I mean, yeah. we are, well, have no, whatever, with them. whatever, man. <laughs> that whole feud, like much like the console feud, is mm-hmm. it? Yeah, it's not. Weird. Uh, no, well, one of the things that is just so great about BlizzCon, especially when you talk about the WoW stuff, is that much to Ryan's point, these people are so invested mm-hmm. in their game and in their characters. It's just so ah, the tension, the tension, <laughs> Jocelyn. When you are in that room with 20,000 other people who, like, will shout at the top of their lungs, you know, for the horde or yeah. whatever, they, like, I can feel them, like, just <laughs> clawing at their chair when they start <laughs> announcing these things that they're going to change. Yeah, so... Like, b- both out of fear and out of just excitement. Like, yeah. oh, my God, what's going to happen? So what like, was the reaction? Like, because, I mean, obviously we've seen we've seen Twitter. We've seen, you know, all of the articles and, you know, the reactions of the crowd and stuff. But what sure. was the actual feel, like, on the ground at the con after Warlords of Draenor was announced? Which, for those of you who don't know, who don't follow WoW, Warlords of Draenor is the next WoW expansion. Um, we're not 100% sure when that release date is coming, Correct. We didn't get a reason. No, yeah. they didn't announce it. Uh, so, if a betting, if I were a betting man, I'd say the first half of next year. Okay, um, yeah. I was gonna say probably um, maybe September next year, but you See, know, the, yeah. Oh well, well, okay. Yes, it was. Was there some? Was there another part of your question? No, it's okay. I don't want to talk over you. Okay. <laughs> um, no, the reason why I say the first part of next year is because they've already said that they're not going to have any other raid content mm. for this expansion. And mm-hmm. they're already, like, they're at Siege of Ogremar now, and they're already getting a little, like, it's already getting a little long in the tooth. So if, I mean, if they're talking about, you know, at at most another six months of mm-hmm. this, I can see people kind of falling off of the yeah. wow wagon, as it were. Yeah, that's um, very true. But anyway, uh, two things. I think, one, um, I'm glad they waited a year to mm-hmm. talk that glad they skipped last year's blizzcon yeah because it, this year actually felt like they announced quite a bit mm-hmm. whereas in mm-hmm. sometimes in previous years you're just kind of like really that was it yeah and you again kind of like what i was saying earlier this is what they've done to themselves mm-hmm. they everyone expects something huge and it doesn't always happen well and i mean the perfect example of that is starcraft is that yeah, there yeah. there were no big announcements they basically like they had yeah. wcs which was awesome But then um, they didn't announce anything. They basically got up and said, Legacy of the Void is not ready. We're having trouble making Protoss feel like how it should, which basically they're saying, like, we want it to feel like the master race. We want you to be able to build your units and feel like you're powerful, but we still want it to be challenging and we don't want to break the balance of the game. And we're really struggling with that. So we know the story that we're going to tell but the game doesn't feel right. So, you know, it's it's nowhere near being ready. And, you know, I think everybody, all the StarCraft fans just kind of walked in and went, oh, uh, <laughs> we were yeah. expecting when, like a release date for this or something. <laughs> sure. When and did that, they talk I do about not that, envy that though. position. No. What? Hmm? I was going to say, when did they talk about the StarCraft 2? Was that was that during the StarCraft 2 update that they talked about that? Yeah, yeah. Because that's super interesting to me. Um the fact that they're actually talking about this expansion, you know, not well, being they kind ready. Of already announced it. Yeah. Well, that's well, they why. announced it a long time ago. I yeah. mean, right. That's kind of the point, right? So everybody's wondering, like, where the hell is it? Mm-hmm. It's a natural yeah. question. Yeah. Well, I mean, if um, you remember Heart of the Swarm, like, they leaked. There, not they, but there was a leak of these um, cinematics, like the very rough early draft of the cinematics. That wasn't a leak. Sorry, not a leak. Well. Yeah, I know what you're talking you about. That it? was like that was two BlizzCons ago. No, it was a, it it, it was on it was a it was a, a preview. Yeah, no. it, but it was the I know what he's talking about. It, it was it, it's, it's, it's a like, storyboard. It, story, yeah. It's a storyboard of the cinematic, meaning that you just see drawings. Yes, yes. Yeah. 
but it, but what I'm saying is it is it spoiled the story for people who watched it. But it was a leak in the sense that they were and it was not an intentional inten intentional leak. You know what I mean? Is there another word that I'm missing? <laughs> like a hack, I guess. Is that what we're trying to? Anyways, it was interesting to see how how far along the these cinematics are. Like they like you said, they built the story. The story's there, so they probably mm -hmm. have all of that stuff ready to go. The story, and... the story's not the issue. It's all about know, the yeah. balance. It's well, all about the balance. Now the balance, like of the campaign. Well, no, well, I mean that too, but certainly the multiplayer. Well, yeah, the I think there is what they, yeah, what they were talking about. I think was like um, new units that they wanted to bring in. They were talking about like for those of you who've played the Heart of the Swarm campaign, uh, you have a hero unit which is Kerrigan, and there are some levels in the campaign where you can do the whole thing just as Kerrigan. You don't even really need to make your, your swarms because she's so powerful, as she should be. Mm -hmm. um, but then, you know, she's not in the multiplayer, but in Pro Protoss, like kind of the lore surrounding the race is mm -hmm. that, you know, there is no one hero of Protoss. You know, there is, there is Zeratul, who is very central to the story, but he would be much more of like a stealthy kind of a character, like a get in, get out yeah. sort of thing, not a roll over everybody, queen of the swarm type character. And so basically what that means is the lore behind Protoss is that all units are powerful and, you know, die for the cause type units. And it's very difficult to build a race for a campaign with that sort of, dominating feeling like you could just they could come in and destroy your planet in a blink and you wouldn't even know what's going on because they have the whole you know like right. um warpy stuff and crystal stuff and all this technology and and stuff that nobody even understands mm -hmm. and it's kind of mixed with almost magic you know so it just it's this really interesting race with all this lore behind it and to take that and try to then balance it against marines and squishy squishy bugs is just like they're not they're having trouble making the single player feel mesh with the campaign or mesh with the with the multiplayer sort of thing you know okay so well, i mean it, it sounds it's like really they, interesting yeah i need i need to watch that's the one i do need to watch before I, I watched a bunch of the virtual ticket uh both live uh and man blink 182 was shit <laughs> I heard they I were wasn't awesome. Even there. I was gonna say I, I heard there. they were I, awesome. I decided from a... a long time ago. <laughs> oh really? Like I remember hearing them in high school. Uh, you know, listening. I and I mean, them. they're they're the type of band that like uh, very produced. Like they sound great on CD. I, I mean, I hate like going to a concert and hearing them sing. It's like, oh my god, that's not yeah like, one day two. And and I. I had it on in the background and I didn't enjoy it very much, but uh, I'm not a big concert guy either. Foo Fighters was amazing. Mm. Uh, For me, two years Green ago. Day. Green Day is amazing live. Anyways. Oh, I have heard them live. I mean, <laughs> if they get Green Day at the next one, then for sure. But, you know, <laughs> Blink-182, it just seems kind of like... Yeah, you know, you're 10 years too late. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, I watched the movie panel. Um, actually, you know what? Rather than talking about that, like, Paul... What panels yeah. did you see? Yeah, because was... I'm more curious in <laughs> hearing gonna... the live perspective. <laughs> I'm, we talk, you know, I was that, trying I'm to get enjoying, there. And... <laughs> you know what, Ryan? Continue to talk. I'll listen. <laughs> I, I'd rather just sit there and look just... pretty for the whole show. That's all we need. <laughs> Is that why we got Paul? Uh, yep. Eye candy. All right. Yep. Sweet. Bring Bring the maybe one, one more, back. one less button there, Paul. One less button. <laughs> all right. Oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what matter? Oh. There Next you time go. I won't have a shirt under on underneath. I'm sure that'll <laughs> work great. Um, so yeah, what did you uh, actually yeah, get panels. to see? So the opening ceremony is something that should not be missed if you ever go to BlizzCon. Um, mm -hmm. So I saw the opening ceremony. It was very good. I enjoyed it thoroughly. I thought the cinematic of Heroes of the Storm was freaking hilarious. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I loved it. Like the crowd absolutely ate that up yeah. like they just watching all your favorite characters and just quickly wrap each other is just so cool yeah for those of you that don't know heroes of the storm is basically blizzard's answer to dota it is their yeah. moba that takes in all of the characters from uh the starcraft universe from the wow universe and from the what's their other one oh diablo right that mm. that game oh. i never play <laughs> It's yeah, like I literally totally blanked on what their third game was. 
<laughs> but anyways, yeah. so it takes all of your favorite characters from all of Blizzard's properties, which I mean, they have so much lore and so much built up in these properties that I think Heroes of the Storm is going to be an absolute blast. So anyways, it's that's that's fun. what Heroes of the Storm is. Continue. <laughs> Heroes of the Storm is, is it fun? It looks really I well, I we'll get to that. That's mm-hmm. yeah. that's that is at the actually the tail end of my story. Oh, um, cool. Sorry, so we're just getting started. It is a, yeah, it's like exactly. a trilogy. So we're on an adventure. The, the panel Standard immediately Jesus. after that was the uh, WoW panel that mm. Jocelyn was referring to. <laughs> and two things. Four, one nine. is one is generally people liked it. Like, I mean, people were stoked about it. They thought it was a lot of, oh, well, finally. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like the updating of, of models, which right. a, WoW desperately needs. Yeah. Like, it's not even funny. Like, the humans look awful yeah. like the humans are the and people use that as an example like none of them look especially great but yeah they need they need updates what can mm-hmm. you say well um, i mean it's a it's a what nine-year-old game now nine isn't yeah next yep. next blizzcon is going to be the 10th anniversary of yeah. wow so it's gonna be crazy <laughs> it needs to be updated uh, i'm gonna be there i made the decision i got shit from both garrett and dills they were just like what the Come on, never again. You can never again miss BlizzCon. So I'm going next oh, year, apparently. Oh, it's fantastic. <laughs> it's fantastic. Um, and yeah, okay. So another, and right after that, I uh, there was a discussion about the raid panel. Well, they discussed quite a bit of things. They had, had they talked about garrisons, which are that people call it player housing. It is yes. kind of yeah. It's kind of like it, it. It's they're trying. They're saying they're trying to make it feel more like the RTS game in the sense that you're kind of building up a base right. of doing oh, cool. things and you have minions and you can mm-hmm. tell them to do things, which, you know, awesome. Um, I think for most people, it's going to be one of those things that, you know, a few, uh, you know, a handful of players is going to get really, really into and, mm-hmm. you, and a lot of others are just kind of ignore it. Yeah. Um, which happens with a lot of features that they introduce in, in world of yeah. Warcraft. It's such a big game. I mean, well, pet battles is a really good example. There sure. are some people sure. that are hardcore about pet battles and stats then That's there's other people, yeah. Then there's other people like myself who are just really hardcore about collecting them all and just wanting to get them all. I don't want to be the best at pet battling. I just want to make sure that my collection is complete. And then there's other people that are just like, you can battle pets now. What? Who does that? Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> well, it's all it's all about retention um, uh, of subscribers, right? Yeah. So they put as many different little things in there to keep you interested in the game. So yeah. whether it's always looking for new raid or even to keep people from unsubbing until new raids come out, it's yeah. like well. I'm not going to be able to do the next raid until four months from now, so I might as well just take up pet battling or mm-hmm. archaeology. And I, think, <laughs> and I think they genuinely want to make a better game. Yes. Like I think they yeah, actually oh yeah, want to sure. make things more streamlined. Mm-hmm. Uh, another good thing that I think is long overdue is that they, it, with the purchase of the Warlords of Draenor, you're automatically going to have a character that's level 90. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is invaluable. Like, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been frustrated that they've been dragging their heels on this one. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, and you know what? I'm glad they recognize this. I, you guys know that Greg Street showed up at the instance, yeah? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, it, and he actually made a really interesting point, and I'm glad he thought, like, they're thinking about this. He said that when people first start WoW, the content that they see is arguably the worst content because it's the oldest Mm -hmm. it's like when they start like when they first started out for the majority of the races yeah and they don't want that they want the content to be fresh exactly so which makes perfect sense totally Mm -hmm. and i'm glad i'm glad that's happening um well i mean as i mean we've touched on this a couple times uh throughout all the episodes and i did write an article for doghouse about this that um leveling sucks and the only you know, thing that got me through the 18 months it took me to power through the 1 to 85 and, well, I guess 1 to 90 in the end mm-hmm. was uh, that my friends are playing and that I would log in and I would just stand in Ogremar and, and chat to the guild. And that was sure. what I was doing because leveling just sucked. So yeah. I'm glad well, they're doing something. It's it, it. You know what? Different strokes for different folks. I I know some people who genuinely enjoy the leveling experience i know people mm-hmm. who level for fun like they just create another tune and they go through it again mm-hmm. that's what they like doing i am with you on that one completely i like, think people I like that not. though are people who played it through 
and have like played the game for 10 years, played it through when it was original content, there's a nostalgia feeling to them where they can look at the content and go, oh, I remember when I did X with Y person. Whereas I, I come to it and I go, I am leveling through this so fast. I don't know where to go next. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know who these people are. I have no context. Like, right. I mean, I've had people say like, oh, when this thing happened, then, you know, that was one of my favorite wow moments. And I'm just like, wait, what thing happened? Garage sure. wasn't always the leader. I don't understand what's happening right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Or sorry, so, Garage. <laughs> another thing. Is it, that... I'm curious, though, before we move on from the level boost to 90, like, did they address it all? Like, one of the things I learned, uh, like, I played on the PTR a couple times, and they just throw you into, like, a, low, a high level character. Um, are they looking at any way to kind of address the learning curve of giving you all your abilities at once? Like, right. So, are they going to, like, gradually teach you okay this is what this does and this with this or do they just say like like if i get my brand new friend who uh, has never played an mmo before and it's like oh join me at level 90 and they just jump in like does blizzard expect them that, to sort of like drill down and figure out what everything does like i think that's the beauty of leveling they did acknowledge that as a okay. as a potential issue with people well um, i'm gonna that, say and, and right and off leads me sorry can I, no. I know you're sure, going to say that's going to lead you into something. And I'm like, no, no, wait, because I have something to say about this. Um, sure. I played as a beast master from one to 90. And yeah. then I switched to survivalist. And yes, I'm a hunter. Ha ha ha. So um, I Joke. just, well, that people make fun of Whatever. hunters all the time. I was time. a hunter for ages. Yeah. Bite me. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I really liked collecting all the pets. Anyways, not the point. Um, <laughs> my point is that. I went 1 to 90 as a Beastmaster. Survival is a completely different style of play, really. And mm -hmm. I learned it through proving grounds for a little bit and then just going somewhere where the mobs were harder and I had more time to figure out a rotation. And so what I did was I went to the Timeless Isle because things there just take forever to kill. So, you know, and I was able to learn in about a week how to play my new spec and that's all it is is essentially learning a new spec whether you know like you have to learn your spells for switching between specs of a hunter or if you have to learn the difference between a hunter and a mage it's just a different spec it's just a different set of spells and it can be done you don't learn anything leveling because leveling is so damn easy now you go through stuff mm -hmm. so fast you kill stuff so easily that you don't have to learn a rotation I had two or three spells that I just smashed on while I was leveling, and I would kill stuff in four shots mm -hmm. at most. So Well, I mean, it, it'll be interesting. Because, I mean, uh, you talk about learning a new spec, and I, I'm i not even talking about those people. Like, the people say I've never played a paladin, I boost a guy to 90, and I'm competent enough with WoW that I will be able to do what you're describing. Just, you know, deal with it and learn, in, you know, over the course of some grinding. Um, but I'm talking about the people who just are jumping in fresh and getting their 90 to play with, say, us or, or uh, you know, whatever. Uh, they're the people who are going to have the issue. And, I mean, I'm not necessarily saying that Blizzard needs to implement something, but it would be nice to have something there to kind of explain. I don't know. It's just it seems like there needs to be something there to mm -hmm. to net people and say, like, okay, don't don't run away. I know there are 20 things that just appeared in your hotbar, but let's let's kind of focus on a few of the key ones and, and teach you how to do this. Mm -hmm. But not over-tutorialize it. Yeah. I mean, there's got to be the... And Blizzard is the one to do it. They'll hit yeah. a sweet balance if they're going to do something. That's true. Or someone will make an add-on. Sorry, Paul, you, you were going to say something. That, now you can talk, Paul. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so that leads well, you to... That y'all sure? No. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, okay. Uh, just as a general rule... Y when you play WoW, you almost always, it's kind of a requirement, you always have some kind of supplemental content, meaning that you mm -hmm. kind of have to go somewhere else in order to learn a lot of the systems that you would need to learn in order to raid, for example. Right. Like, there's no... It, you there's can't no raid. how to raid tutorial. Well, right. <laughs> and there, well, and you have to go to YouTube to look at how to get down this boss. You mm -hmm. need... I don't know of anybody who doesn't use deadly boss mods that is taking raiding even half seriously. Mm -hmm. Uh but okay what blizzard is trying to prevent is people leaving like that so i know they're going to try i know they did mention i i don't know if this is part of it but they're going to try to tutorialize a little bit better for you what is available to you especially in the way of your skills mm -hmm. um 
I also know that they did mention something called adventure mode, which okay, it kind of what it, what they're touting that to be is okay. I haven't played WoW for maybe six months, just in, as, a, as an example, and I rejoin. What it's supposed to do is it's supposed to look at where you are in terms of your gear level or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. a, a variety of different things. Okay, you need to go. You, stuff, content that would be good for you is probably in the Timeless Isle. Right. Gear that would be good for you is probably, you know, in LFR doing blah, 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 mm -hmm. or, you know, doing flex or whatever. Right. So I think that that's where the direction that they're headed. Mm -hmm. uh, whether, I mean, whether or not they're successful about that, I have no idea. Mm hmm. Well, I mean, as someone who who uh, drops their sub and resubs every three or four months, that feature is like perfect. That oh, is totally exactly like if I were to sub again right now, there's no way I would know without looking yeah. in all kinds of different places about where I should be going mm -hmm. in order well, to like I mean, improve my character. I'll, I'll resub and and you know you get in there and unless someone tells you what to do, it's kind of like right. I'm going to spend an hour figuring out what I want to do. And then when you, you know, log out and think, oh, I should play WoW, it's like, no, I'll just have to play an hour trying to figure out what I yeah. want to do. And and I think it's that it's that loop that just constantly screws me over. And I think that feature there is like, okay, yeah, I'm going to go straight to this point, you know, and, and do what this is telling me to do. Mm. And eventually you won't even need to consult it because, again, you'll get on that path, right? But uh, I think it's nice to know you know, to have a system that says, you know, you should probably go do this. Yeah. Sure. Fair enough. Sure. So what else did you do at BlizzCon? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, from there, we went to, after the original panel, we went to actually play one of the dungeons. The first oh, cool. new dungeon in WoW, and we got as far as the first boss. We downed him. <laughs> nice. We're writing FAQ already. <laughs> <laughs> no. You got him on no, farm yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, I can say that the character, the new character models for the ones they had look great. They had the dwarf, they had the orc, and they had the gnome. Right. <laughs> I and remember I looking they... at that and seeing all the character models that were missing and that, like, blood elves aren't even on the list. And I was just like, okay, I do realize that blood elves came with the next expansion with Burning Crusade. But at the uh -huh. same time, like, Burning Crusade is still years and years and years old. Like, if you're going to oh, do totally. one, just do them all. Just do them yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, well, I think they will. I think that yeah. that's just what they wanted to show. Mm. Um, and I think... Well, I don't know, that... because the cause I went to, to the actual site, not just... I'm not talking just about the, the actual um, presentation. I mean, on the website, it says, coming soon for all the races, except for not the Pandaren, not the uh, Draenei, and not the Blood Elves. Oh. Um, yeah. Oh, that's too so bad. they have... Yeah. Yeah. So it's basically just the the Burning Crusade stuff and the Mist of Pandaria stuff is not getting redone, at least from I... what the site is showing. It says everything else coming soon, and then it show you can look at the model for the gnome, the dwarf, and the and the orc, and that's it. I think they'll fix that eventually. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> anyway, anyway, whatever, whatever. Who plays a blood um, elf anyway? I right? <laughs> me me. <laughs> Oh yeah, I thought you were Email, making a slight at me. <laughs> so there's no, there's no difference. Anyway, we are got. We also played a bit of Diablo three. Uh, they're mm -hmm. adding a new class called the Crusader. Oh and cool. That class is pretty damn cool. Yeah. You're basically a, the equivalent of a knight. And I, I mean, always some, kind of want to get back into it, but you know the, what? Um, some of those abilities are badass. Mm -hmm. Like they're just there's one that you can summon a fire steed. And oh, he just cool. leaves this trail of fire behind him as you roll around. Uh, there's another one where you it's basically like a giant hammer of justice. You go flying up in the air and then come crashing down. Nice. Uh, <laughs> it's um, uh, it feels weighty. Like, I, I liked that. I liked that. It, like, and you use your shield like as a weapon. It's kind of so cool. that is very close to the paladin because I know playing with Joel, he plays paladin. And he has a, an attack where he throws his shield and he's got the big mighty dropping hammer and he I'm trying to remember uh no I think it might be the the warlock mount maybe warlock mount that has oh. the flaming horses is what I'm yeah yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah so I mean it's it's not all ripped off the paladin but that Probably. that sounds very paladin-y to me yeah they said they got inspiration from the 300 movies which I can kind of see mm. Like they, I mean, basically being able to use your weapon and your shield and kind of tandem. Mm. Uh, so 
Did you play did... Diablo 3 on a console or a PC? So I played um, I played on the PC and then I played it mm. on the PS4. Oh, cool. Oh. So, like, I, Jocelyn was saying, like, she always wanted to get back into Diablo 3, and I, I tried. There's a downloadable demo on the um, PS3 at least, but I'm sure on the Xbox as well. And using a controller wait, with that game... Wait, 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 wait. What did you say? Did I go robot buddy? Um, no, no. I'm wondering what you just said. Like, <laughs> you know that the, it's not coming to Xbox, right? Diablo 3 is currently on Xbox 360. I'm so, I'm okay. We're talking. About I can't. This. I can never tell whether it's robot or you're just like that does not compute. I, 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 <laughs> Diablo yeah. three is on the consoles right this second, right now. You could go out and buy a copy. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm very sure. I just played a demo on the PS3. It it, it ran. It was not in right? my imagination. You played it on the PS3. Not the but Xbox, my, I believe. Is his my point. point is, it's not. It's. I'm pretty sure it's exclusive. No, it's not. I, sure. it, anyways, okay, we are not Googling on the show. We are moving on because we're I'll running suggest, out of time. I'm just Sorry. saying, I would suggest you try. All right, yeah, I'll, I'll, do the, I'll do the condensed version of awesome. Uh, <laughs> the line for Heroes of the Storm is just bad all freaking both days. Both days have been awful, and with good reason. I get it. It's just annoying. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, just for the record, the chat room saved your butts. Ryan is right. It is available on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 as of September 3rd. PlayStation 4 is coming in 2014. It is not coming to the Xbox One. Okay, that's so, probably where that's yeah. probably where the confusion lies. I apologize. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you, chat room. Chat room. <laughs> We're both right, as Ryan likes to say. <laughs> Compromise. Hey. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Uh, day two, um, we saw the movie panel. There mm. was a gross lack of information oh. that everybody wanted to know, uh, and uh, I don't I, I don't see how a lot of times they can have these panels and not give you like just I kind of figured they'd at least tell us the story. Yeah, I know they well, know it. We they already know what the They're story is. They're going into is. production. Well, kind of. They said mm. that it's about like they said it's origin stories, right? No, said, no, no, no. There was a leak. Well, not really a leak. There was um, uh, basically a job ad for um i can't remember what it was posted on but it was basically like the actra website or whatever and it showed a synopsis of the wow movie it was like four weeks ago i want to say now um oh. and it's the it's arthas it's the lich king so are you oh, sure yeah because they, the panel, they totally did not say that yeah yeah, yeah. It was. So I, I said, go <laughs> listen to the instance, dude. You're supposed to be the intern. I'm just saying. I... <laughs> um, I'm behind. <laughs> yeah, no, that was yeah three or four weeks ago. Now was that? I thought leak? so too. I swear to God, I thought I thought it was around Arthas, but yeah. what they were saying at the panel kind of refutes that. Okay, and what I... did they say at the panel then? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, what they said was that it's about the, how the original conflict of how it started between the humans and the orcs. That's yeah, the, it, between which is way different than Arthas. Mm -hmm. Like, right? It's it's many many years apart. Yeah. So I, I that's why I'm I heard what like I had originally heard that the whole art they were going to talk about the death of Arthas basically, right. which kind of makes sense. Yeah. I swore up and down that they would do something. <laughs> That with related to Arthas. Well, Arthas is sense. such an he's amazing, so... relatable character. He's a great place to start. He's gonna pull people in that are not fans of WoW, just that are fans mm -hmm. of fantasy, that liked Lord of the Rings because Lord of the Rings is so popular. Like it's gonna bring sure. in mainstream people because it's a relatable story, and he's a very interesting character. Not to mention cool ice sword thing. Like yes, please. <laughs> it's true. Cool I ice sword Arthas... is a huge seller. Yeah. <laughs> I think Arthas might be like the easy way out and what they proposed at the panel way. It, I think it is the easy way out when you really think about it it's a great story and it's a human character yes. who turns yes. supernatural but with the story they just and you know they weren't even going to talk about the story on the panel like right. they had to get they it didn't. out of Duncan no they 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 did in a sense they said like what? It's gonna. It, they didn't say like, and this happens, and this happens. They didn't give a synopsis. They just basically said it's gonna focus on, you he know, before characters. the first war. And he, he mentioned, mentioned two characters, characters. Uther and Duratan, which gives you an idea of what the movie will be about. 
Uh, not Arthas, basically. They gave us <laughs> they and they gave us screenshot, not screenshots, but concept oh, art. Yeah, which looked fantastic. Hmm. Yeah, it looks great. And mm -hmm. I mean, what the pedigree that they have going on there? What was most encouraging to me about that whole thing was that Duncan and the visual effects artist. Sorry, I don't remember your name. I know he listens to the gamers in. I they really right. love the lore. They mm -hmm. love wow. And I think they want to do right by the series. And that is very encouraging to me personally. Yeah. Um, and well, and I mean, WoW is so, uh, not necessarily lucky, but just they have so much. They've built so much. Sure. They have so many, like, I mean, I've just started reading the novels and, you know, getting all the backstory that I missed by by coming to the game so late. And, uh, yeah, the uh, just... What they have to pull from, the material there and the characters, everything is so deep. I'm so looking forward to this. I'm looking forward to the WoW movie finally being a good video game movie that everyone can get behind. And then, you know, this will be the catalyst like Spider-Man was for superhero movie movies where people are just like, oh, wow, there's money in this and we can do it right. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I hear you. And uh, we'll see, basically, is I have, my have faith cast. is in you, Blizzard. Let's do this. <laughs> they have a cast. They didn't say who it was. Um, again, disappointing, but whatever. I'm hmm. glad. Uh, they whatever. walked they, in with nothing, unfortunately. Like they, they, they had lot, an they, hour panel and they had three sh sets of concept art, which looked great, but there was no like, like if you look at the other panels, there was a um, reveal set, and with the WoW movie, there was no reveal set. Like they just talked about it. Really. Okay, quick yeah. question, Swick. Um, in the panel, did you get to see the mystery footage? That they no, oh. another disappointment. See, that's again freaking a. How is it possible that they displayed this thing at Comic Con and nobody leaked it? Nobody yeah. leaked. I think it didn't. I think it didn't exist. Everyone's just like, okay, guys, we're gonna right. prank. We're this gonna troll joke? the entire <laughs> internet. We are gonna tell them that we have seen like two minutes of the WoW movie, and then we're just it's never just, gonna show it. It well, doesn't then, exist. <laughs> it's not in. It's not in production yet. So it. It mm -hmm. was just test footage, I guess. Yeah. Like, uh, hey, this. It's gonna look like this. But they still. did mention that it was gonna look like <laughs> movies like Avatar, mm -hmm. meaning that it'll be human faces, human interaction with cg on top right basically mm -hmm. is how that's how they're going to do the orcs anyway mm -hmm. uh, a lot of a lot of little discussions about like you know the human armor looks like it's unmanageable in real life mm -hmm. so how do you how do you make like realistic looking armor while having it not look just completely unwieldy mm -hmm. or actually being unwieldy because you know <laughs> there's actors in it. exactly but whatever yeah. it uh I, it's a lot of wait and sees it's mm. a lot of wait and sees. I think, you know, it was they I know they have they okay, again, they didn't give us enough information. They said they had a date. They didn't say what it was. Mm. They just said they had a date. Originally it? it was gonna be in twenty fifteen. Yeah, that's what I thought. Uh, so I don't think it's gonna be in twenty fifteen. Oh, well, they have a date now. They've announced it officially as December eighteenth. It's it's not gonna be that close to Star Wars, dude. Well, they'll move it because just, of Star Wars, but their their scheduled release date is December 18, 2015 at this point. When uh, All I can tell you is that Duncan said that it's going to be over two years away from where we were. Now, that does fall within the winter timeline of 2015. I just know Oh, wait, that... we're in 2013. Okay, never mind. Yeah. I was thinking, I was <laughs> like... <laughs> 2014. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was totally thinking we were in 2014. And I was like, that's totally fine. I could wait a year. It's all good. <laughs> wait a minute. There's another There's whole year in there. <laughs> something doesn't compute. No. <laughs> Jocelyn does math. Yeah. Uh, Late at night. <laughs> yeah. I know they don't want to compete because the same people there. Oh, of course. Like, when push comes to shove, people are going to watch Star Wars before they watch the WoW movie. And that is a lot of the same. No. Like, <laughs> well then do you think they'll push it earlier maybe get it in november no. release you no. think it'll go into 2016 i do sorry oh, you think that, that they'll go with it with a january do you think that they'll go with it like a january 2016 no. or do you think they'll make it like a summer blockbuster type release maybe do a march i love might, the march releases. right so they might I, I think ryan may be right about that mm -hmm. i don't think it'll go as far as summer i do think that you're but you're right joss like they're not gonna january is yeah. where movies go to die <laughs> Like, yeah, they're, just, they're not going to do that. Yeah. Um, we saw the uh, live raid between Midwinter and um, Method. That would be that really cool. cool to watch. 
that was really cool. It was very it was very close for a little while, and then I mean, Method just ran away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was all good. And then I actually got to hang out with the Instance crew. Fun. Yeah, that was a lot of good times. I had I, that's the, my first time there. I had never been to the AIE Guild Hall thing. Right. Uh, but it, it would was, be like it, mini nurtacular in the middle it of really BlizzCon. Was. <laughs> it really it honest to god it really was like yeah. I, a lot of great people were there um just there are less of us like mm-hmm. you know there's maybe at its highest point maybe i don't know 50 60 people nice um that's but, a good mix that's a good mix yeah it was cool um and then you know we got to do the live instance and greg street showed up and scott didn't know that greg street was going to show up so watching his reaction is hilarious (laughs) and then he kept he kept saying to me afterwards he's like did that really just happen and he's being serious too (laughs) dead serious looking at me like did that no that happened right seriously (laughs) did we get that on tape (laughs) i'm gonna need to watch that back it really did happen (laughs) he's like he's like and then he was telling tom he's like you know what i nailed it i just Holy crap! That like that. I was nailed weird. it, but yo. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Scott's um, reaction. Greg are Greg funny. Street was really a nice guy. He was very amiable to questions, and there were plenty. Um, it started a bit of a, we'll call it a kerfuffle. It started a bit of a kerfuffle <laughs> because he said offhand that they were toying with the idea of not having any flying mounts until the patch after the original release of yep. War the Draenor, and that. Mm-hmm. Oh my my Twitter exploded, and just, I was just like, "I don't want to every, fly." Like every forum, every single one, MMO champion, the WoW yeah. forums themselves, icy veins, like just. <laughs> uh, it's like they just need something to complain about, and yeah. uh, flying mounts has always been one of those things that uh, either people don't care or they just care too much. It's yeah. weird. And well, I mean, the point that um, because I got into a conversation with a couple friends on Twitter about this and and one of the things that they said is make it so I can't fly until in this case, it'll be level 100. Like once I hit level cap, you know, that's fine. But don't make me wait for a patch. And I'm just like, yeah, but it's kind of nice just to keep everybody on a level playing field, regardless of actual level. But, you know, keep everybody on the ground for a month or two, you know, explore, follow the because one of the arguments was. Oh, but, you know, you get up to these weird, you know, cliffs and rocks and you can't get around stuff and whatever. And I'm like, there's roads everywhere. It takes longer, but you can you can get to everywhere. They don't Mm -hmm. make anything inaccessible with the exception of like there was a couple of things that you could only get with flying mounts. But that was put in after there were flying mounts. So, you know, it's I, I just I would love if they kept people on ground mounts. Plus, now when you can fly everywhere ground mounts don't really get used but there's nothing wrong with the timeless isle you can't fly on the timeless isle and that's awesome mm. yeah, I I, that. yeah there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of plus and minuses basically people don't want to feel less mobile mm-hmm. that's really yeah. what it goes down to it makes it people feel weird uh but you i know, guess whatever. but you i i just feel like when you're given the ability to fly it makes it feel like you're in less peril so it makes the game feel right. easier and you miss a lot of content because you can just hop on your mount and fly over an area as opposed to having to walk through it and see the different models of the different, whether they're, you know, critters or beasts or enemies, you know, whatever. Just you can skip it all. And that's no fun. Sure. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, I, you know, it's one of those balancing acts that they have mm-hmm. to do. They're like, which is why they wait. Right. Would eventually you're gonna get to fly, but yes, they want to they want to show you stuff. Yeah. And I mean, mm-hmm. it totally like when they originally introduced flying mounts. I wasn't there, but Greg was talking about it. He's like, it completely borked PvP because <laughs> yeah. people could swoop in, kill, and swoop out. Mm-hmm. Like it, there was no. Yeah. <laughs> that was well, it. world yeah. PvP turned into something that you could you know, keep an eye on to now I always have to be sort of on edge. You know, when you were out in the outlands and you, you were on a PvP server and you were accidentally flagged, you were always looking behind you or, and looking up to make sure people didn't come down because a rogue could come down, gank you, and be right back up and nobody could do anything about it. Mm-hmm. Yep. So you're right, it did um, kind of weird out PvP. Uh, and then after that, Patrick brought... Uh, Patrick Beja, you guys know him, yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
Uh, he works, for those who don't know, Patrick works for Blizzard PR in France. And he, I think he did something. He talked to Greg and uh, like Adam actually had him come on. Um, and then after that, we all, when I say all of us, like it was me, Scott, um, Brian Ibbett, Tom, Nicole, Mark Spag, uh, just a bunch of other folks. I, ten, there were 10 of us. Mm -hmm. And we all wanted to play Heroes of the Storm, right? And we thought a good time to do that was during the Blink-182 concert because none of us wanted to see it anyway. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I, Scott, as a you know, it is yes, typical yeah. old man kind of a thing, whatever. But I was having more fun at the guild hall anyway, so yeah. time well spent. So we all went down there, and everybody had the same freaking idea. Aww. Like, <laughs> it didn't, but, yeah, it didn't look too packed on the virtual ticket. <laughs> but um, Patrick, in his HRiness of Blizzard, uh, was able to get us in, like get the ten of us to play. Wow. Uh, I know. And it was like, and it was a 5v5 match, and it was so much fun. I, there's a lot I could say about that. Like, I, I played <laughs> Dota for a long time, mm -hmm. and what this game is different enough that I think it's going to both be interesting to the person who's played those kind of games before and not as taxing to someone who's just starting. Yeah. Because it, it <laughs> uses a lot of concepts that everybody seems to understand. Like, I, I find uh, Dota 2 and um, League of Legends quite inaccessible to play oh, at anything more than, like, I mean, I tried it and enjoyed it at a very low level, but as soon as you get into, like, the point where you start playing with other people that you don't know and everything else, and, you know, it just, it's too much. It's a, tri it's, it's a trial by fire. Yeah. It, it, very much like it is it, you're gonna get ripped apart up and down exactly if you i mean you're gonna get whatever. destroyed in terms of gameplay you're gonna get destroyed in terms of like uh chat and just the attitudes of people playing sometimes like it just yeah. it's not a it's not conducive to new players joining the game it's like if yeah. you haven't been on board since day one forget it get out go find something else to play so i sure. find that wow games in general are more accessible i mean even if you look at hearthstone hearthstone versus magic hearthstone's way more accessible than magic ever is even even the the um oh, that's true virtual yeah. versions of like a um, duel of, of the planeswalkers for magic you know it's like you can buy that on steam and play that and it's not nearly as accessible as hearthstone is yeah. sure well the systems aren't overwhelming well, you know? Well, right, yes. and it's going to be one of those things easy to get into, difficult to master. Yes, and yeah, in good. the same way that I think Hearthstone is. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, right off the top, the there's more than one map. Yes. So, and in those maps, there is some level of interactivity, meaning that you can actually do something in the map to affect to affect everybody else. Which is very. That's cool. not true mm -hmm. in Dota or League. Mm -hmm. Not really. Um, so, <laughs> I played as Diablo. <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> he is <laughs> Scott hated my guts. He, <laughs> he is it, so first of all, it, okay, you have collective leveling, meaning that I don't have a level. We have a team level, which is very so, cool. Right. So meaning that everything that you do is contributing to a group level, meaning we're all the same. Mm -hmm. And you can still see, like you can see the breakdown of what who's doing what if you wanted to. Right. But in the end, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Everybody's the same kind of level, um, which is great. S second thing, there are no items. Which is oh, also God. very nice because that's yeah. what I hate <laughs> about Dota is that, you know, there are so many freaking things. I never know what to buy. You know, all uh -huh. I know is that I'm supposed to be trying to get as much gold as possible. And then I go to the store and I'm just like, I spend the whole game going, uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Items are, are, you know, in Dota, like, they've gone a long way with the guides, Paul, that you sort of introduced me to in, both, sure. or in Dota 2. It helps. But it helps, but it's definitely not perfect. It doesn't, it doesn't replace, you know, the months you can spend you know really mastering it and mm -hmm. um i'm glad that blizzard has, has said you know what let's let's not bother with let's focus on the fun and you know it's kind of it's you know it the parallels it draws to the smash brothers series in the sense that you got like so many characters in there but also with smash brothers like i would just turn items off like let's just freaking hit each other man mm -hmm. like 
The yeah. items are just, you know, it adds too much complexity and randomness to it. Let's just talk about the heroes, you know? Yeah. Sure. Um, and there's a lot of other little things. Like, you can choose between, you know, you know how when you level up, you choose between a series of uh, where, which ability you want to level up. Mm -hmm. And you kind of have that, just not as specific. Like, I get, you know, I can choose from a list of three things saying, you know, I want to up, I want to buff up all my abilities by 10% or I want more health or I want mm -hmm. more whatever. And it just, it just allows you to choose and you just, Hey, pick this one. I want this one. Right. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't fully understand what was going on with the levels. Like I knew I cursed the other team somehow. <laughs> um, and like they're okay. And in the jungle, there are bigger minions. Mm -hmm. Once you beat those minions, they don't die. They kind of cower. And once they, once all of them in the group cower, they kind of are, they are on your team now. So they'll just start going attacking towers. Oh, cool. So it, it actually adds a further benefit for you to, you know, try to actually do something about that. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I mean, really all I can say is it's just a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Which it's I mean, fun to play. that's pretty much what Blizzard does is, you know, they, they take a look, do their own take on some existing ideas and it's just always fun always well they the line that they kept saying even like the heroes of the storm panel and so on is that they want to make games that they want to play yeah so i mean it that kind of you know it kind of falls into place for them i suppose mm -hmm. absolutely um, one one last thing before we we obviously have to wrap yeah up, we but, do have to uh, wrap this up <laughs> when it comes to titan that's the biggest elephant in the room you could possibly fit into that convention center. Um, sure. Did it come up? Did it, it, was it something people like, you see all their announcements, it's like, I kind of don't care about Titan. I can wait a few more years to enjoy all these other great Blizzard titles, but it just feels a little weird that like for years, you know, we we're kind of getting, okay, 2013, Titan's going to be a thing. Mm -hmm. And then obviously there was news that Titan, you know, gone back to the drawing board to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. um, right. And then we didn't see it. So it, was that an issue for people? It certainly didn't seem like it from the reactions I saw. They are into it. The people, you know, much in the way of once they announce all this, all these things, the joke among them is they're going to get a lot of feedback for just all of this stuff that they'd announced, meaning mm -hmm, that, sure. you know, you're on the ground and you're like, oh, that's kind of cool. But, you know, people start talking and people start, you know, starting flaming on the forums and then they just, you know, it's just kind of a, it's just kind of a balancing act. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can say that the general sense, they didn't bring Titan up, but I think everybody knows pretty much why that is. Mm -hmm. Like, what are they going to say? <laughs> it, 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 they ripped it up. Yeah. You know, it's not what it was. And I don't think it's a, it's, I don't even think it's a game yet. Yeah. I think wow. they have an idea about what they want to do with it, but they don't show, they don't show these things until they're almost done anyway. Absolutely. Well, I mean, you look at Heroes of the Storm, they, you know, they had a, it was basically a mod and then it changed right. two or three times over development. So, and that's well, just that's, a small little thing. That, so you can imagine what Titan it could be that discussion right did come up quite a bit is yeah, it did, yeah. being such a crowded space how can heroes of the storm survive and i guess after having played it i can say that it's a probably a different of enough game for people to be interested in. mm -hmm. that panel was great so if you do have the virtual ticket make sure you watch the heroes yeah. of the storm panel for yeah. sure well, I think that pretty much does it for this week. And actually, I mean, it's really the first week back in a long time. I mean, we haven't had a proper Gamers In episode since the week before uh, before Extra Life. So yeah, it's been oh, right. oh, wow. it's been fun. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <Yeah. laughs> um, Swick, what do you want to plug before we head off? I do another show called Sleeping with the Elephant with Mr. Ryan Murphy right over there. Mm -hmm. Other side, about... other side, point the other way. We talk about. <laughs> Crack smoking mares, basically. Exactly. Oh <laughs> so it's been a lot of that. Yeah, he's been. Oh my! I love the Toronto mayor. <sighs> he is hilarious. He's, yeah. He's a live version of Chris Farley, but not for long. Except that he is running the biggest city in Canada. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you guys elected him, not us. I love that. Yeah. We're not the only screw ups. <laughs> oh, you guys will do something stupid. Yeah. Don't worry. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> uh, so, anything else other than sleeping with the elephant? Uh, I obviously am an internist with Mr. Scott Johnson. Internist. Over... Yeah. <laughs> 
over <laughs> at well really everything that he asked me to do but mostly final score in the instance so uh yeah check those out as well and you can also head over to slashloot.com where you can pick up some awesome t-shirts including the gamers in and final score and the instance all have shirts over on slash loot as does angry chicken actually come to think of it so um head on over to slash loot.com and pick up one of our t-shirts i don't think we have any codes right now there was a code going on during blizzcon but i think that's over now do you know if that's still valid i'm not sure oh no no it was only only blizzcon okay so yeah no special discount codes sort of this week guys sorry but uh anyways head on over to slash loot they've got so many awesome geeky t-shirts uh lots of your favorite podcast stuff lots of stuff uh that are just hilarious so uh yeah head on over see what they've got pick yourself up some loot um i think that pretty much does it for us ryan do you want to plug anything before we go um well i mean watch the gamers in stream uh we're gonna go on live with a lot of stuff you know now that uh i have the ps4 so i'll be hitting that share button from time to time so keep an eye on that but uh other than that you know zombies ain't my podcast i guess Hmm? i said you don't want to pimp zombies ain't my podcast i'll do it for you (laughs) <laughs> oh, I don't know. We I, I didn't. We never do that. So I was like, yeah, you know, zombies ate my podcast. We actually had Joel on uh, to talk about uh, the Walking Dead episode five, so which that was, was really an amazing episode, by the way. First one in a yeah. long time that I've really, really enjoyed. I haven't and seen that's the it other yet. thing. Yeah. You know, we, oh, well, spoiler alert: yeah. there's zombies. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, we had a really interesting conversation, and uh, you know, it's a show about zombies, but we're not hardcore fans you know we well, we are hardcore fans but we're very critical you so, are and that's you know. one thing that i do actually really enjoy about i mean i don't listen to zombies Eight Man podcast all the time because i'm not a zombie <laughs> fan but i am a walking dead fan so i do try to listen <laughs> to the walking dead episodes and it's really nice to get a balanced view of the show and not just oh my god they're zombies we love it woo so yeah, sometimes we can <laughs> there's get some into of that little, but <laughs> yeah but other times you know we bring it back and you know yeah uh, yeah, it's fun. So yeah, it's good stuff. So you guys should all go check out Zombies Ate My Podcast. And that pretty much does it for us tonight on the Gamers Inn. We are going to be going live on the Gamers Inn Twitch channel with some Borderlands 2 in uh, probably about, oh, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes. Give ourselves and our voices a little bit of a break. Uh, plus, <laughs> you know, beers. I need beers. So yeah. <laughs> you can uh, visit us on the web at gamersinpodcast.com. You can find us on A Move TV along with other fabulous shows, including StarCast, Campaign Roundtable, Biggest Fan, A Move radio and the angry chicken you can follow us on twitter you can find me jocelyn at gis gamer ryan is at r murphy and don't forget to follow the show at the gamers in the video versions of our episodes can be found on our youtube channel which is youtube.com slash jocelyn moffat you can also find us on facebook and google plus but i'm going to be honest i never post there so just go follow twitter (laughs) (laughs) if you want to email the show you can do so at info at gamersinpodcast.com so before we close this off i just want to give a quick shout out and thank you to greg moffat for creating our music you can find him on twitter at sounds influence we would also like to thank joel duggan who does all of our graphic work you can find him and everything he does at joelduggan.com so thanks for staying at the Gamers Inn, and remember to tune in next week for episode 100. Oh my god, we're going to do something awesome. Wow. We don't know what it is yet, though. But it's going to be awesome. <laughs> but it's going to be awesome. <laughs>